Uh, I'm from Java side. Uh, excited uh, to see all the technologies that are discussed here. Uh, that's absolutely perfect. I know many are Java based, so uh, it may be useful to connect uh, to some like search engines and other things from microservices and vice versa. And so this, it's actually the same world. Um, yes, I'm the commuter in OpenJDK and also kind of a doctor today. Um, I work in a company named Bellsoft. Uh, we provide our own binaries of OpenJDK. Uh, the OpenJDK uh, assembly is called Liberica JDK, just in case, and we actively contribute uh, in OpenJDK itself, not just me. Uh, a lot of guys and uh, not not too many girls, but I hope uh, this amount will grow. And if we talk about modern systems uh, that use Java in uh, its in their backend, most typically uh, we come to using microservices, and this is a growing trend. Uh, the amount of deployments uh, with containers uh, becomes higher last few years. And technically, it is a very simple thing. We can create a binary blob with the container image and transfer it somewhere. Uh, but we don't do it uh, too frequently. Most typically, we instead, we'll use kind of a shared repository uh, and uh, layered images. And we'll combine some ready-made layers and our business logic layers. And that registry also can be located uh, in different places, can be provided by different parties. It can be located at developer's machine and then proxy it in some production, or it can be a third party registry like, like Docker Hub, uh, or it can be a software as a service, uh, like uh, cloud providers give us. A lot of scenarios. Uh, we should be aware of uh, which exactly scenario uh, is used in our uh, production, in our CI, CD, because uh, something may be not free. So many things nowadays are cheap or absolutely free, uh, but not all the things. And if you use something for free, be prepared that uh, terms of usage may change. Uh, very easily, like in one day, uh, we saw it on Docker Hub. So it's not something that cannot happen. In the end, we s just spend some resources. Uh, we need electricity, we need traffic, we need time, of course, we need computing power. It all costs money. So here, if we talk about efficiency, smaller containers can help us to save all that resources. Because uh, our images can be transferred and they have to be transferred over, the, over the, the network. It will happen faster and uh, it will take less time, et cetera, et cetera. But is there a problem with small containers? Well, actually, they may be fully functional inside, just like TARDIS. Uh, small containers. Uh, super cool from the inside, and they're tiny from the outside. Most uh, images for containers that we build use other images as a parent. Uh, and that can be a very simple one, or it can be a slightly more sophisticated one. Just get used uh, to having something as a parent image. I'm in Java world, so to me, kind of base image is an image with some OS layer and JDK. And it also includes actually not just uh, pure OS uh, functionality, but typically some dependencies required to run uh, JRE or JDK itself. And then maybe some packages to run our native libraries in the application or uh, some dependencies for uh, libraries or parts of it. That's quite typical. That's why OS packages is kind of cut or split it here in this picture. And our business logic uh, is the very top of this uh, prism. Uh, and it's actually 
true because uh, then they look at the thin jar sizes, for example, then they build uh, some, I don't know, microservice. It will be kilobytes and the rest of the container will be huge, like an iceberg. And how do developers build that things? Uh, this is a question in Russian, don't be afraid. Uh, you, you will uh, see the familiar words here. Developers sometimes use containers, sometimes not. If they use them, sometimes they rely on some automated build tools like Paketo build packs, for example, that already ready to provide layered images out of the box if you just configure your build system. But many ones uh, write Docker files themselves just by hand. Some use other like different automation tools, not just Paketo uh, build packs and Spring, uh, but also Jeep. Uh, and some still deploy var files. That's very interesting. And uh, those numbers change uh, very rapidly during especially last year. I would say that the amount of people who still uh, don't use uh, containerization, it drops very fast. So of course we have an option to optimize the top layers of our production. We can choose slimmer libraries. Uh, we can split our application into smaller parts. That's understandable. <clears throat> but uh, we also can think of optimizing the bottom part. And uh, the very important question here is the question of criteria for that optimization. I talk about size, but that may be not the most uh, important one. And of course, it's not the only one at all. There are, you can imagine, a lot of different sites uh, that uh, are critical to your uh, deployment, and they may be more important than size. But as I said, size allows you to save uh, pretty clearly some costs in the cloud. That's why we're talking about it precisely. Uh, if we talk about size, again, let's look into layers. Yes, we can uh, optimize Cherry in a different ways, uh, like, for example, J-Link. Uh, but sometimes they are not very convenient. And uh, what about OS part? Well, again, let's think about smaller uh, base OS images. We can estimate uh, and study size of any image that uh, we can acquire. For example, uh, well, I'm a Java person, remember. Uh, we can uh, inspect the some some image called OpenJDK. Well, uh, we can look deep into the levels of that image and see that it takes like over 250 megabytes over the wire. And if it's uncompressed on disk, it takes more than half of gigabyte. Why it is so big? And it's not just big. For example, I have a 100 megabyte network. So uh, megabits, sorry. And uh, pull time uh, for a clean repository for this image. For me, it, it's being pulled from Docker Hub. Uh, it's almost uh, half a minute. So I will sit and wait, or I can uh, show you a few slides uh, during that happens. Well, not so funny. And to us, uh, it may look like uh, doing anything in the cloud is free. Well, storage is almost free. And if we stay in the same region, and if you use the resources uh, provided kindly for free, to us by cloud provider, uh, they will cost basically nothing. Uh, but if something happens, like if we go to a registry in a different region and we do only 1,000 deploys, uh, we get a bill. Hmm. And imagine you need to scale your production quickly and to add, uh, well, same 1,000 instances, uh, you'll have uh, 
quarter of terabyte traffic. And that may be not public cloud, maybe not uh, AWS that's uh, highly scalable, maybe your like, inner bank system with some on-prem data center. Mm -hmm. Certainly not funny. So if you speak about uh, that combined OS and JDK images, JDK can be plugged into that in a different ways. It can be a package installation or some binary drop and then uh, linkage of it. Uh, so making all system tools uh, available out of the box, etc. So it's some work and it requires some testing for sure. And in the end, uh, again, you take some base OS image and they are dramatically different, especially they're different in size. And you see here, there is one very special, super small image called Alpine. It is Alpine Linux. And it is, you see, 10, 10 times smaller uh, than larger ones here, even more than 10 times, like 20. Uh, and it still has standard C library, it has package manager and has shell. So if we talk about distro-less images, they are not uh, smaller because they are smaller if we don't include a standard C library. And that makes no sense, right? And uh, they are not truly a distro-less images. Most typically it is some uh, distro image uh, without the package manager. So it's kind of Frankenstein. Well, and if you add JDK to such small Alpine uh, uh, OS layer, uh, we see that uh, the resulting image will be super small, much smaller than uh, other ones based on Debian or CentOS. And what will be the pull time? Well, again, TARDIS flies here. You see the pull time will be instant. It will be four seconds on my machine. Uh, if we talk about cloud, uh, the ratio between uh, large image and small image pull time will be about the same. So small containers really help us. It's a very good technology and well, is it is it done? Was it hard? What's What's the key point here? Well, yes, key point is Alpine Linux. This is the magic tool that makes it work. And this is secret source. And this is a special uh, Linux distribution. Uh, it's built around uh, two key components. First, of course, it's a standard C library called Muscle, which is small, which is built to be small, which is built to be simple, effective, but still standards compliant. Uh, then we really like it uh, in our company. It makes us feel scored comfortable because, well, you just you just take uh, some code, uh, look at it, and no black magic there. It's really understandable if uh, some undefined behavior uh, is implemented in one or another way. Uh, you understand why it happens. So. There are a lot of pros and um, there are principles being followed. Uh, some interesting points here, like uh, full-fledged uh, UTF-8 support, etc., which makes it, again, a good quality option when we talk about different C libraries. And there are numerous uh, different C libraries. And even creators of uh, Muscle, they participated in comparison, and you can still find it in terms of performance, in terms of um, compatibilities to standards, uh, user friendliness, uh, where, for example, standards uh, don't define the behavior. And those are very interesting questions. Again, uh, choose your criteria. What's uh, the best for you? In terms of performance, we saw no real difference for applications than we switched from glibc to Muscle. So Muscle is really a buzzword and uh, it's a magic tool of Docker Who. Uh, please remember it. See that there are a lot of platforms supported 
by different uh, uh, C library implementations. And there are a lot of issues there. So Muscle is different and how it influences OpenJDK. OpenJDK is a big C++, mostly C++ program. So in the main headers, in main uh, files of it, of course, we include standard libraries uh, that have their implementation in that standard C library available in the system. And it's been dynamically linked to the JVM itself. Another thing uh, in Alpine Linux is PCBox. It's a Swiss Army knife, uh, the single binary that implements functionality of different standard uh, Unix uh, tools. And uh, it's also designed to be small. It's also uh, designed uh, to be fast, effective. Uh, a lot of code is reused and uh, it uh, saves some resources like heap, for example. Uh, I like it. Uh, it's about performance, and uh, there are a lot of usages of BusyBox, like, for example, standalone binaries for Android, etc., etc. It's embeddable. Uh, sometimes uh, it may confuse someone. Like, you see that the, your favorite tool is just a symlink, and it's a symlink to BusyBox, but it just works. That's cool. Uh, there are other components, like, uh, quite uh, convenient package manager, APK, uh, initialization system, uh, and the initialization of the image itself is rather uh, simple and fast. And uh, standard binaries uh, in the packages are built uh, with uh, stack smashing protection, which is also nice. So, they use different package repository in Alpine Linux. It's not a Linux that we see in wild on desktops because it's special, it's small. So it's kind of different. But for containers, it's a cool finding. It has all the tools, it works. And again, it is very, very small. But running OpenJDK on Alpine Linux required some uh, sophisticated work, and there was a project that lasted uh, a couple of years uh, called Portola. And finally, Project Portola has been integrated into OpenJDK on a scale of JDK 16, and now we are waiting for JDK 16 to uh, 17 to be released uh, this fall. Uh, but uh, it has been integrated in 16, that means that all companies that wish to uh, release their binaries for uh, Linux muscle, uh, that they can just take same source from the OpenJDK mainline. And it's supported and it's changed along with all other changes, no need to port back and forth. So this is a very a good thing. And that work, uh, by integrating uh, uh, the changes in OpenJDK has been uh, performed uh, by our team. And it is kind of an interesting experiment uh, to see uh, what port, even port for a different C library uh, looks uh, inside uh, as a work in OpenJDK. So technically you need to scan through a lot of places uh, that occasionally require glibc and to make them conditionally different uh, for muscle uh, because some functions are just not present on in muscle uh, they are glibc uh, specific uh, there are some agreed extensions to POSIX but again uh, not uh, some functions from glibc are used also uh, some just work slightly differently and also, uh, you need a cross tool chain, which is convenient. Uh, then you work uh, from glibc based systems, and it gives some other benefits. We'll see it on the next slide. And uh, of course, testing, support, and documentation that are very important parts of this work. If you go to OpenJDK documentation and take uh, that a cross tool chain that's uh, referenced there, you can assemble your GNI binaries for muscle from glibc system. 
And it's rather interesting. So you see, uh, we can use just a regular compiler to make a JNI a library from C source. It's a trivial hello world where hello is called uh, inside the C code. And yeah, it will work on my host, which is uh, Linux uh, x86 uh, with glibc. And so it will work on uh, Alpine with glibc layer, of course. And surprisingly, uh, the simple example will also use, uh, will also work um, in muscle based Alpine. But uh, that's not guaranteed. And if you check the reverse, uh, we can get a smaller binary, by the way, uh, by compiling uh, the, that's, that crustal chain. That's a binary for uh, muscle. And if you run it in a container, so we run the example Java that calls native, and uh, that native is linked for muscle. And we take a container uh, the Java for Alpine muscle and Alpine muscle as a base layer. So it will work, of course, because we cross compiled, and I said that's the work is, is done and the tool chain is real, so it works. If we run it in Alpine with glibc layer, of course, it will also work because, well, we have uh, the muscle inside. But uh, if we remove a glibc layer, then, well, you see, uh, that won't work. So uh, there were interesting issues uh, during uh, the, um, uh, the work of making the port official. Uh, some uh, may be faced by a regular developer, like LD Preload, for example, on different systems resolved uh, uh, not full paths, but short paths in different ways. And that's uh, that happens on the different C libraries other than glibc and muscle, for example, in uh, AIX environment. Uh, some Interesting hooks were related to older functionality uh, with uh, security in the kernel that uh, was built for Alpine. Uh, if you take newer kernels, uh, that's not a problem. Um, debug issues were successfully resolved. Uh, and also, uh, then we developed JDK itself. Uh, there are some unexpected uh, signals uh, during uh, the run of JVM. Uh, never mind. Uh, if you're a developer uh, who writes Java code, you'll probably face some practical issues like uh, off screen rendering. Yes, AWT in container is usable. No problem. You just need to install fonts. And uh, if you uh, like native memory tracking and use it inside a container with Alpine, well, please just use the latest one. Uh, which you'll get if you take ready-made images. Again, some uh, very unusual, but possible case, then you uh, use Alpine container or system on a numus, NUMA uh, hardware. Uh, well, if you want to uh, make all JVM NUMA features working, just install LibNuma. Okay, as I said, BusyBox may be slightly different. Uh, there are interesting differences in behavior of uh, muscle then you uh, execute something, for example, shell files. Here you see uh, shell file won't be executed if it doesn't have uh, shebang uh, in the very beginning. Uh, variables, uh, diff dots, uh, not just in Alpine and the muscle, they uh, can you know, lose their parts because uh, it's not expected. But, well, thanks to Spring, uh, it's not a problem. Just use underscores and uh, it will work. So serviceability agent uh, was not included uh, in this port, uh, but uh, it actually has been removed in it's not, it's not present in JDK 11. Uh, you see here, uh, then the take uh, to Alpine system so with uh, different JDKs. Uh, one is for muscle and another for glibc. Uh, one has uh, dash F option and another one does not. Again, I said it, it's not a problem because in 11 you won't have it anyway. So we now have uh, that cool port 
what other options do we have? Well, we have native images. And uh, we also provide the Liberica native image kit uh, that uh, helps you to build native images. That's not the subject of this talk. Uh, but the important difference here is that uh, you always have the fat artifact. So we have very thin uh, base layer, but you have to redeploy uh, the entire big top of that iceberg uh, with uh, native image. And of course, something may not work because it's a new environment. Um, from the other side, uh, it uh, gives some benefits, like smaller footprint on startup, instant, instant startup itself. So just think uh, what exactly do you need? As I said, there are issues, uh, different garbage collectors, different tools. It's a different world. And we'll get back to containers. Still, native image is an option. Uh, but what about Java 8, for example? Well, again, TARDIS can be very different in a different worlds. Uh, people who still use Java 8 and Java 11 should be happy because they also have uh, that Alpine uh, muscle ports, uh, not in mainline, but still available as a supported binaries. And also that's true for server arms and even devices like rotors uh, can run uh, that uh, Java distribution out of the box, uh, which was very surprising, but uh, it really works. So then you uh, select your build uh, container uh, layer structure uh, for your production, you should think, do you really need a uh, fast start or do you need uh, some environment that you're familiar with? Like I only use APT package manager, I need that. Okay, then take something uh, that is uh, Debian based. But do I really need glibc or not? Well, if not, why don't you just take Alpine if you don't care? take smaller image and it's still Java and it's uh, specification compliant. So, and it's again, Linux, it is specification compliant. You have all the tools, everything works. Just take what is smaller, what is more effective. In special cases, the fast startup and if you use uh, certain uh, frameworks, uh, take native image, like take Liberica native image kit and create native images. Choose what's best for you. As I said, there are options uh, to build an image. If you don't have objections, just choose uh, smaller images uh, for your base uh, layers. Alpine is a champion here. And uh, now JDK works with it natively and Please remember about some potential issues. Unlikely you will face them. Remember it is official. And yeah, welcome. I'm ready to answer some questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, trying to get people's questions in. But I had one for you, probably because I'm a, a C++ noob and uh, kind of a Java senior noob. Um, what goes into making muscle so much smaller than glibc? You know, and you said most people aren't going to run into the the, the missing pieces, uh, but I was just kind of interested in how it got so much smaller. Uh, more effective data structures, uh, less sophisticated code. So make it simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the savings you showed uh, in that one slide was quite impressive. It, yeah, thanks. And uh, one more uh, interesting point here is that uh, try to be mostly a wrapper for kernel calls. So don't implement mm -hmm. your own logic, just go to uh, syscall. Yes. Cool. Interesting. If anyone else has a question, feel, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, and someone, when I, when I was first kind of doing container 
container development, everyone I always heard was said smaller is better, right? Um, that seems to be kind of the underlying theme uh, of a lot of the stuff you presented. Is that, should I take that away as kind of a container noob, just smaller is the preference? Yeah, sure. It's much more convenient in your developer environment. Just yeah. no disk waste, uh, instant calls. Right. That's it.